Hello everyone and welcome to Building Web Applications. My name is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com. Today we'll be discussing how you can format text. So sometimes you need the text in your document to be bold, or italic, or underlined, perhaps even strike through. There's also subscript and superscript, and then even the ability to highlight certain text in your document. We're going to see what kind of tags we need to use in order to do each one of these different formats. So let's take a look. We've done a lot already in this document, and I think it's time that we clear out everything that we've done so far, except for the structure or the skeleton of our document. So everything inside of the body of this document, I'm going to go ahead and delete. That way we just kind of have a bit of a cleaner slate. Now I'm going to add some text here, but I'm first going to want to put it inside of a div, just so that we know that it's kind of its own separate thing from just the overall body. You don't have to do this, but I do like to put content inside of tags. I don't like just any loosely hanging content. Now the next thing that I'm going to do is add a B tag. And inside of the B tags, or this B element, I'm going to put some text. And it's just going to say, this is bold text. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this. I'm just going to save this. And we'll right click and select the Open in Default Browser. And here we see when our browser opens it that the text is indeed bold. And just so that we can see that difference, I'm going to go ahead and go up above our div here and make another div. But inside of this, I'm going to have some this is regular text. So there's nothing special, no formatted text going on here at all. And that way we can see the differences here in our browser if I refresh. So this is regular text. This is bold text. Now we're using the B element, or bold, but there's another element you can use to basically do the same thing. And it's called the strong tag. So I'm going to do a strong, and inside of strong I'm going to say, however, strong is preferred over bold. And that has to do a little bit with the context of what strong means over bold. Bold actually adds a little bit of some context to what you're trying to do with the text, right? We're saying this is a strong statement. You could say this is a bold statement too, but there's some semantic meaning behind the word strong as opposed to just B, and that's why strong is preferred. Now let's go ahead and save this, and I'll once again refresh my browser, and hmm, so it doesn't look like we have a space like we do with this is regular text. And our however strong is preferred over bold is in fact the same type of boldness, right? It's the same strength of text. So how can we drop this however strong is preferred over bold? Well, what I could do is I could just add another div here, right? I could wrap the strong inside of another div and that would actually drop it down to another line. So if I just wrap that up in div and save this and do another refresh, okay, that's okay, but that seems like a little bit extra than what we need to do. Is there some sort of line break, some way of basically telling the browser that I want to hit enter here and make it a new line? And the answer is yes. You can use the br tag, and the br tag is a line break. So let's go ahead and save that. And let me go ahead and remove the div, actually, before I save this. Remove the div, just so that you can see it still does the same thing. It's just going to make a new line here for our strong element. OK, save that once again, refresh, and nothing really looks like it's been changed, but it has. And I can verify this if I just go ahead and um, I'm going to need to do a special key combination here of F12. All right, there we go. So now we can see inspect element and view source will now appear in the context menu. And this will open up our developer console. And I can expand on this and I can see inside the body that we do in fact now have this BR tag instead of the div around the strong. So we can see right here in our developer console exactly what the elements look like. That's pretty cool. So F12 gets you that little inside look into what's going on behind the scenes of the page. All right, let's move on. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 
after the strong element, let's do italics. So I'm going to do an I element or uh, I tags. And I'm going to say this is italic text. Don't forget our BR tag. And I should probably also add the BR tag after our strong element. That way we have line breaks after each. We'll save this. Once again, refresh. And there we have italic text. But just like we could do with bold, we had an, a semantic tag that said, however strong is preferred. And we had the strong element, which was preferred over bold. There is a similar element with italics, and that's the emphasis tag. So the emphasis tag is just EM. So if we say EM, and then we can use though emphasized is preferred over italic. And I'm sure I'm probably going to make some typos along the way. So please don't, don't throttle me for if I misspell a word here or there. I'm trying my best. Uh, but there we go. So there we have the emphasis tags around though emphasized is preferred over italic. And if we save this and once again refresh, we can see that it looks italic. But in fact, it has the emphasis tag, and that is preferred over italics. I'm going to go ahead and add another sentence here. So this one is going to say, you can use the small tag to reduce the size of text to small. And I'll add the BR tag. Now, I'm going to make this word small actually appear in smaller font. But I'm not going to be doing any CSS to do this. I'm not going to be using any styling or any special uh, of, you know, style attribute to make this happen. Instead, I'm just going to use the small tag. And I can use the small tag and wrap it around any words that I want, any text that I want to appear in a smaller font. So we'll go ahead and save that. And once again, refresh. And you'll notice that the small, though it's kind of hard to see, it is in fact smaller. Okay, so that's the small. There's also another really cool one that I like, and you probably will see this from time to time in a news article, and that is the ability to highlight or mark text. So I'm gonna say, and you can even, we're gonna say mark, and then inside the mark tag, we'll say highlight text. Oops, forgot the E there. Here we go. And we'll say with the mark tag. Don't forget our break. We need to do that after every one of our sentences if we want the next one to appear on the next line. So we'll go ahead and save that and hit refresh on our browser. And there we go, highlighted text. That's awesome. Now, let's say that you made a correction to the same news article that we highlighted text. So we have kind of this, we previously had some sort of text in there, but we need to show that we made a correction. So what we're going to do is, on our next sentence, we're going to say the del tag will make the text, and we'll use the del tag, and inside of this we'll say strike through. Okay. It's just basically adding strike through to your text. And once again, don't forget our BR tag so that we drop to the next line. Save this once again and refresh. And there we go. We have strike through text. All right, next we'll do some inserted tag. And this is going to be underlining. So we'll say, and the INS, which stands for inserted. So we'll say inserted and we'll say after that, tag will underline text. Once again, BR, save this and refresh. There we go. So the inserted word is underlined. So we can use that INS tag to underline specific text. Okay, great. Let's go on to the next one. The, this is going to be the last one here for the sentences that we're going to do this formatting of text. So we're going to say, you can also, and then we'll do, so we wanted to see subscript and superscript. Those were those two funky looking, you know, smaller and uh, texts that appear 
kind of lower on the line or higher on the line. So subscript is just simply the SUB key, or I'm sorry, the SUB tag. So this is gonna be subscript. And then we'll also say, or, and then we're gonna say SUP, which stands for superscript. So we have subscript, and then we have superscript. And this is gonna be superscript text. And we'll put the BR tag on the end there and save this. Once again, refresh. And there we go. So we can see subscript appears lower, kind of below the line where the normal text is. And superscript actually goes above the line. That's especially helpful if you're trying to do notation. So if I want to do something like E equals MC squared or something like that, I could do that. So I could say something like E uh, equals MC, and then I wanted two to appear as squared. So I could use the superscript to say that two should be kind of in that higher range. So we'll save this, and if we refresh, E equals MC squared, and that's how that can look good. Okay, there's one last thing that I want to show you, and we've been using this BR tag to represent line breaks. But if you wanted to, you could, in some cases, you want to have like this text that's already, uh, that's going to be a little different. We want to set it up to be different and pre-formatted. So what we're going to do is below this div, we're going to add another element, but this is going to be a PRE element. And inside of the PRE element, it will acknowledge any line breaks and white spaces that we do in here. So if I wanted to say uh, non, let's see, let's do this is pre hyphen formatted text. And if I do a couple of lines, so I'm not doing the BR tag, I'm actually using the enter key to add some extra space. And now I can say, you can add extra lines. And if I save this, well, once again, refresh, you'll notice that it adds this extra indentation and this is pre-formatted text. Now, why do we have the indentation? Well, that's because we have indentation. If we get rid of this and save it, and once again, refresh, look at that, it lines up all the way over. So the tabs that you put in here, the white spaces that you add in here, all of that will be registered with the pre-format. Okay, so let's say I have, this one has a bunch of extra space or what we call white space be, be, uh, before the this word. And then the U only has a few spaces. And that way we can kind of keep this uh, look and appearance to it so that it follows exactly the format that we have. And the, t the font that's being used is Courier. Okay, you could change this using the style attribute on a pre, uh, but that's typically what you're going to be seeing is courier new for the text. Now, in contrast, if we just tried to do basically the same thing, but we just did it inside of a div element, and we're not going to use line breaks, then we would see something like non pre formatted text. And then if we tried to do, oops, must accidentally hit something there. Oh, we had some uh, IntelliSense catch me there. Okay, so I'm just gonna add a couple of uh, spaces, uh, an extra return here, uh, or line break, but without using the BR tag. But I'm doing this inside of the div element instead of a pre element. And so it's not really gonna have any pre formatting. It's gonna once again try to interpret this as just regular HTML. And since I don't have the BR tags, this isn't going to show that extra line. So we'll say, will not have the extra space. And then we'll go ahead and say BR, BR, unless you add line breaks. And the reason I'm putting the BR tags on the same line as this other text is I wanted to show you that HTML is interpreted, right? It's going to interpret this line. It does not interpret the space. It ignores this extra space. It will not interpret that extra space to mean anything. It's looking for these type 
of little tags. And that's when it will decide what to do with those elements. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. And even though I have those BRs on the same line, it will add line breaks between will not have extra space and unless you add line breaks, but it will not add that extra line between the non-preformatted text and the will not have extra space. So if we do a refresh here, we'll see down below the non-preformatted text will not have the extra space. So even though I have this extra space in here, you would think, oh boy, there must be some sort of gap there between text and will. But when you look at it, nope, you wouldn't even know that there's a space in there at all. But you do see the line breaks here, and that's because we use the BR tag, even though it's on the same line as this text of will not have extra space and unless you add line breaks. So it can be a little tricky. If you use the PR, uh, PRE tag, then it will remember those spaces and the line breaks and any sort of returns. But if you don't want it to do that and you want to specify it using HTML, then you have to use the BR tags to add those extra lines. Special thanks to these members who've signed up and become members of Programming Made Easy. Your contributions help the channel grow, and I really appreciate it. If you would also like to be a member, all you have to do is click on the join button, either on my channel or below this video. Now, unfortunately, some of you may not be able to see that join button because you're in a country that doesn't have it available. That's okay. Thanks for thinking of me anyway.